Hello there. Welcome to another midweek meditation. I am Reverend Devin, and this is a weekly meditation that I do for my churches in Hyde Park, Bakersfield, and Jeffersonville, Vermont. This is also a meditation that I do for anybody who's joining in over YouTube and is looking to nurture a progressive faith. If you're looking for a second opinion on how we can build up a loving faith within our lives, I hope that you like and subscribe, and please feel free to share these videos with anybody you feel called to. Hey y'all, welcome to another midweek meditation. I am Reverend Devin, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. This is a story about a rich man and a poor man called Lazarus. No relation to Mary or Martha, sister of Lazarus. This, and also bear with me because I have a really hard time saying the name Lazarus. Um, this is a story about how we listen to God. It's a opportunity that Jesus uses to tell his disciples, so this is in parable format, how it is that we build walls between us and the word of God, and how often we fail to listen to God. This story talks about heaven, and it talks about hell, or rather it talks about Hades. And I think it's important that we keep the historical context in mind when Jesus talks about these sort of things, and I'll talk about that after the reading. But first, let's share this reading, and then I will go on my usual rant about what it is I think that this passage is saying to us, and how I think we can apply it to our lives here today. Keep in mind, these are all suggestions. If you don't agree with me, feel free to comment in this video, uh, and also feel free to reach out in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the reason I make these videos is to engage you all and so that you all can engage me and any representative of a progressive faith. So let's see what Jesus has to say in our reading from Luke. Our reading for today comes from Luke 16 verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick at Lazarus's sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out the rich man, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said then, Father, this is the rich man, I beg you to send him to my father's house. He's, he's begging Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, the rich man, No, father, Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham said to the rich man, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone else rises from the dead. So Jesus is playing around with this Greek idea of the afterlife. Uh, I think it's important to mention that the Jewish tradition in Jesus' day were only developing this understanding of heaven and hell. It's not something that Judaism historically had within it. And most folks throughout the history of Judaism before Jesus believed that you lived your life and you either did that in accordance with God or listening to God or you didn't. And after you were dead, that was that. But this idea of an afterlife, it started to take on after, after the Greeks conquered the region. And so 
Jesus is playing around with this idea of, you know, who's in the good place and who's in the bad place. And in this passage, we see the rich man, you know, he has all these great things in his life. But when he dies, he finds himself in the bad place. And I think that what Jesus is trying to do with this by, by what Jesus is trying to do by bringing this story into the afterlife is he's trying to take us out of our context, of our context of living, and to bring us into God's way of seeing the world. Yeah, Lazarus was hard off in life. He had dogs licking his wounds. He didn't have enough to eat. But he was in touch with God. Whereas the rich man, who had fine linens, he had food in abundance, never noticed Lazarus sitting at his door, was not in touch with God. And so I think that here in this story, we really are seeing Jesus really commenting about wealth inequality within his day and age, and trying to show us that God wants for us to listen to a message of justice, a message that brings us together with our brothers and sisters. And there are things in our lives that get in our way when it comes to listening to that call of God. Jesus is asking us a question in this passage. He's asking, are you listening to God? Do you want to listen to God? And I think that that is a question that we should be paying attention to because very often, by default, we just say, yeah, of course we want to listen to God. But Jesus is telling us the reality of what God is saying often is not something that we want to listen to. We live in a world where we honestly should be paying a little bit more attention to Jesus' ministry on wealth inequality because that was everything that that was the main body that was that was what that was his thing that was Jesus's thing wealth inequality in the first century we're in the 21st century and we still have a problem with wealth inequality it's getting even more out of hand in our country here today than it's been in the past it's getting to the point where we almost are seeing first century type of inequalities. And I think that this issue of looking out for our sisters and brothers is something that we are struggling with here today as well. I have seen in several places where I've had the privilege of living in my life, what wealth inequality does for folks who are struggling. It very often is the Lazaruses of the world who lose out when it comes to the world's priorities. When I was living, getting my education at Union in Harlem, I saw people moving into the area, the area getting gentrified, and it was people who were low income, people who were struggling to get by, people who were doing everyday jobs that were losing their homes and having to move out of Harlem. There was a big fear that Harlem would become less black, that it would no longer be the cultural center of black America. I don't think that that happened, but a large part of the reason it didn't happen was because what you saw was a demographic of folks who were black and well off moving into the area and unfortunately displacing other black folks who were not as well off. There was an inability to see that we within the black community have a responsibility to look out for each other and to help our brothers and sisters out, help them stay in their homes, help them stay in their community. And as a result, I think a lot of people lost their homes, lost their community. I think we're seeing that here in Vermont as well. We're seeing a sort of tourist housing vacation economy prioritize folks who have money and are willing to spend that on places to live, spend that on businesses, spend that on um, things that are important to them. And as a result, it means that those of us who have less means are less hurt. And this is the type of thing that Jesus is talking about. I don't think that Jesus is just talking about, are we listening to God? Jesus is talking about, are we listening to others? 
we need to keep in mind that in this story, in this parable, the rich man never paid attention to Lazarus except for when he needed Lazarus. And even when he needed Lazarus, he saw him as sort of a lackey. He saw them as, as a tool that he could use for his own ends. He never saw Lazarus as a person. And that is something that we often habitually do within our lives. We become so caught up in our own lives, our own problems, our own lived experiences, that we fail to see other people as people. And this relates to a wide variety of things beyond just wealth inequality. If we're talking about, for instance, things like police reforms, I think a large part of the reason why we see, why people, especially in Vermont, struggle to see why this is important, it's because we within Vermont, being a state that is primarily white, fail to understand or to listen or to see through the experiences of black people and the interactions that they have with the police. Even if those interactions are recorded, even if the death count is put in front of your face because we have not lived those experiences. It's hard for us to see the personhood of people who are suffering due to that sort of social injustice. The same goes with poverty because many of us, or at least those of us who do not have to live through experiences of poverty, don't have that background. It's hard for us to hear the voices of people that do. And so I think it's important for us to realize that inequality within our world comes in a variety of different forms. And those of us who do not suffer from those types of inequality really do need to listen to those who have. If you are a man, for instance, it's important for us to listen to women when they tell us about gender inequality. If you are a person who has benefited from colonialism in any ways, I think it's important for us to listen to our native American brothers and sisters, or our Hispanic brothers and sisters who are, you know, those Hispanic brothers and sisters who are not colonial descent, um, who have not benefited from colonialism about the injustices that they face in their lives. And I think the same goes with racism and slavery. You know, those who suffer from racism within America, it's important for those of us who are, have benefited from those systems to listen to those who have not. In order for us to live our lives with perspective, Jesus tells us that we need to be open to the voice of God as it comes through the experiences of others who are less fortunate than us. Because those of us who benefit from prosperity run the risk of putting up a great chasm, as Abraham puts it in this passage that keeps us from understanding the will of God. And when that chasm gets thrown up, I think Jesus is putting forward an argument that it is not those who suffer who are in hell, but rather those of us who are not able to hear or interact with the call of God because we are separating ourselves from that love. We may be able to enjoy our lives and the privilege that we have with us, but those lives serve no purpose to God if they are not trying to use the power, the privilege, the authority that they have to create justice and equality between our brothers and sisters within this world. Jesus tells us that our lives have purpose. Those lives are meant for healing. Those lives are meant for community. Those lives are meant for love. And a life without love is a life that in its own way is hell. I don't know if Jesus is saying that you're going to get thrown into hell. Because honestly, I don't know what that first century viewpoint is. But I do know that Jesus is saying that there is a serious disconnect that we often struggle with in our lives that keeps us from understanding and listening to the will of God. And sometimes that disconnect is because we just don't want to listen to the will of God. If we want to see this world heal, if we want to see this world made whole, if we want to live lives of love with our brothers and sisters in this world, we need to find ways in which we can get through that divide and realize that God's voice often speaks to us through the people who are suffering at our doorstep. Amen.